Thank you very much for keeping it one in the morning. As always, it is a pleasure being with you. Now, this particular conversation continues right here on Y254. If at all you're just joining us, my name is Ram Maguko. Welcome. This is Youth and Politics. Today, we have a conversation about the reopening of universities. And uh, in regards to this, what are the measures that we have in place, especially when it comes to the security of our students? Now that you're going back to school, do you feel like there are some things that you need that need to be addressed especially by the universities or by government make sure that you give us your take in regards to this as we could continue with this conversation i am joined by david wiper he is the president of the catholic university of kenya who is next to mikarub sana david he was with me from the beginning, uh, joining me again in this particular conversation. It's a pleasure, my brother. A pleasure. Uh -huh. And uh, to my extreme left, uh, representing Cliff Oketch Onyango. Cliff, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going <laughs> but anyway, that, that's on a light note. Uh, that is, uh, representing Cliff okay, Onyango taking his position, I am with uh, Brian Cotieno. He is the acting secretary general at the Student Association of the Technical University of Kenya. Thank you. That's right. Yeah. And also the sports secretary. Exactly. Uh huh. Mambia Mipera, Nimeguzia story up before we went on a break about uh, what was it about? It was about Man Manu. City. Yeah, Man City, Manu. Yeah. What is your take in regards to that particular story? Man City, Manu, to Liverpool. They had a match on Sunday. Yes. Yeah. Your thoughts? But uh, Liverpool apparently backed off. Well, uh, uh, so <laughs> apparently, while you go for the great Man Manchester United. The yeah. great Manchester. Yeah. Where do you support our Manchester University United player? I am supporter. <laughs> <laughs> I made a mistake of getting two my new fans for the same <laughs> set. <laughs> the hashtag as always is why in the morning at Ram Aguko and at Y254 channel. Give us your take in regards to the conversation that we shall have this particular morning. But now, before we uh, start that, Y254 is celebrating its fourth anniversary. And as why in the morning right here, we would like to appreciate our viewers for being part of the Y254 family. Thank you very much for being with us. Y254 turns four. And as always, we do not take you for granted. So what we want to do is, we are giving away the gift vouchers. We are giving away prizes for you for being a loyal viewer. Now, the question is, what do you need to do for uh, you to get to win these prizes? It's very simple. All you have to do on this particular show, why in the morning, we would like to ask you to just name the presenters that are on this show. What are the presenters? Give us the names of all presenters, all of them, all presenters of why in the morning. The hashtag is why in the morning. On Twitter at Rama Google. Head over to Facebook on our Facebook page, Y254. Drop in your comments there. Drop, drop, drop. The more you keep commenting, the higher your chances of winning. And you may ask, what is it that we have in store for you when it comes to winning this? We have water bottles that are branded, branded. We have t shirts, we have branded pens, we have airtime uh, worth a lot of money that we are giving to you. We also have, uh, you know, gift bags that are there so you, you do not want to miss this particular uh, competition if you'd like to be part of this conversation go head over to facebook and twitter give us your uh, your input in regards to this what are or who are the presenters of why in the morning name them one two three let me give you a hint my name is ram maguko anza nahapo anza nahapo the more you keep commenting, the higher chances of winning. As Y254 celebrates Y254 anniversary, we have hit our fourth anniversary this year. Four years. Siraisi. Siraisi. But the far we have come, it is because of you. Thank you for being our loyal viewer. Thank you for being part of the Y254 family. Thank you very much for making Y254 the best youth station internationally, if not locally. Y254, imagine. As always, thank you so much. Well, keep testing and keep tweeting. Hashtag 
one in the morning at Ram Maguko. Head over to Facebook, Y254 channel. Where, uh, and uh, at the end of this show, I shall head over to Facebook to see Ninani ame tuma messages hapo hivi. Ninani ame comment hapo. Just uh, tuma majina, ma presenters on your one in the morning. Alafu tutaweza kukupata hizo ma gift ampas. You know, water bottles, bags, t-shirts, airtime. You know, all this just for you, for being our loyal viewer. Y254 turns four. Let's move on to the conversation of the day. Yeah. It's a celebration. Thank you, uh, Asante Kwakuja. It is you guys that make Y254 to become what it is. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Comrades. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, universities are now opening. Yeah. And it is a time when things are different, yeah. uh, considering the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, let me start with uh, you, Brian. The Pandemic has struck us, uh, but are the universities prepared to receive their students? The universities are ultimately prepared to receive uh, the students. And mm -hmm. uh, the only challenge that might be, be there, I think, uh, is when it comes to adhering to the COVID-19 rules, when it comes to accommodating students mm -hmm. uh, in class, wherever places they are supposed to be residing in or sleeping. Mm -hmm. The social distancing rules might be a challenge, and mm -hmm. apparently, uh, to some extent, I might blame uh, our government. Uh, mm. Because uh, this is a pandemic that started, I think, a year ago, two years ago, roughly, one and a half years. Uh, mm. And uh, we were, 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 were talking about March, March last year. March last year, mm -hmm. it's COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Other countries, it started sometime in November, December. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, apparently, a lot of infrastructure was to be placed or to uh, supposed to be put in place before students resume. Mm. As we speak, uh, I think uh, not all, let me say, I think 10% of universities have placed measures when it comes to accommodating students. Uh, but one thing I must uh, commend the universities uh, is mm. the fact that... Uh, not to microphone, yeah. Uh, one not thing uh, I must commend uh, yeah. the universities, uh, mm. most universities have tried to implement the online learning uh, mm -hmm. where students can learn from home or mm. whatever places they are staying at. Mm. So for that I must commend and also trying to subsidize, the government trying to subsidize uh, the airtime for mm -hmm. students to mm -hmm. make sure that they can uh, attend online classes. That one I can give a nod. Mm. Uh, we are prepared in that but when it comes to accommodating our students in places of residence, places of uh, a class where they can learn, I think we are still behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should we have um, any set of priorities when it comes to these um, uh, universities being reopened? Uh, since we are seeing students coming in in numbers, um, initially uh, we had students going for online classes. Um, should we fully uh, go back to the normal interpersonal learning and what priority should we put in place right now online or interpersonal wiper i think uh, first of all you asked a question of uh, preparation yes i think yes. we have to say that we, yes we are prepared as the varsity as the students body and i know even from the administrative side mm -hmm. they are very ready to receive the students back mm -hmm. because uh, they have laid foundation I think the implementation of the MY protocols and their adherence, that is no longer a problem as at now. Mm. And again, you have asked whether we should resume now physical learning mm. uh, and fully or uh, we should uh, uh, remain online. Mm. The priority that we should The put. priority. I think mm. um, one thing that has been put in place mm. is uh, robust uh, investments on uh, on online learning especially mm. on my my university and that is catholic university of eastern africa mm. and i engaged my brother here he also told me that that is something that they have now operational and it is very active so i think there is no time and the thinking of that we should now resume physical learning in totality should not be there it should be an adult i think moving forward what we should put or what we should have as a, pro a priority or what we should have as a model of learning is the blended mode where we have got both online and on-site students i think you sh we, we should now ensure that uh, we invest fully in this and uh, the universities now have to wake up to this call and mm -hmm. to ensure that there is thorough investment that is an answer is that is put into place mm. to ensure that the online learning continues mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and at the same time we have got the on-site classes ongoing yeah. i think 
because you know this is something that was never anticipated and it came into place mm -hmm. and you know it really affected us and now moving forward we should live with that we should be ready for anything because we do not know what will happen tomorrow mm -hmm. so I, we should I, put I, this into place and we should, it is one thing that we should always maintain what i the beauty of this is we are having this conversation with student leaders that's the beauty of this. We're having this conversation with student leaders, people who are on the ground mm -hmm. and are, are taking uh, the center stage. Uh, you are at the forefront when it comes to handling uh, your fellow colleagues or comrades. Exactly. Um, how is it in your school, particularly? Um, during this time that you've been you know, interacting, how has it been in school learning? Um, has it, how interrupted has this been? Uh, are we expecting to see graduations being postponed? Uh, you know, are we expecting to see people uh, retaking uh, some of their courses? You know, how has it been for your universities? Yeah, so personally from Tuka, mm. uh, I'll add on what you said. Uh, you've asked, uh, I think, two questions. Uh, how, how has it been? Mm. I think uh, there are courses that uh, cannot be uh, taught online. When mm. it comes to medicine, when it comes to technical courses, engineering, mm -hmm. because these ones are hands-on, skilled courses, you have to do them practically. Actually, majority of courses are at, uh, at TUC. At TUC are uh, practical courses. Yeah, yeah. So we try, just as you said, blended. Eh? Mm -hmm. So we don't, we don't allow students to come in in flux like once. Mm. What we do, we can say that uh, the timetable has me been made in a manner whereby we can say third years can have uh, lessons from uh, in the morning up to afternoon. Uh, they leave the institution. For tears can come in in the afternoons up to some time in the evening. That way. So it's more of uh, interactive, but the only thing is that we are trying to avoid the crowding part of, of students interacting closely. So we create more space by allowing students to come as per their level of, uh, of, of education. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, Graduation cannot be postponed. Last year we did online graduation. So uh, what the university did, we, the only audience that were allowed were the administration, the council, mm -hmm. and the people, the academia, the all academia, mm -hmm. maybe with the student uh, representation. Mm -hmm. Then thereafter, uh, the graduates will follow the, the graduation online. Now, my, my, my issue is particularly, in, before, I, before I come to choir, um, Graduation can't be postponed. It you, can't. Yeah, you can just do it online. Yes. But considering the fact that some courses need you to be physically present, mm. and uh, you can't be physically present, mm. do you know there was a, 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 for the past few months, yeah. uh, people were told to go online. Mm. You know, should can that affect someone's um, you know a progress in school? When necessity requires that you have to attend a practical or a class practically, mm -hmm. it has to be postponed to a time whereby it is safe for you to come. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot, this is a process you have to undergo and you have to be refined so that when you graduate, you have to be a product mm -hmm. that is refined. Yeah. So if it is not possible for mm -hmm. you to attend it practically, at that moment, hmm. then it has to be postponed. So you, you, you guys, you postponed um, s most of your classes? We did postpone. So yeah. what we did, being that uh, we could not postpone further, hmm. the, the courses that will do will uh, we'll be done online hmm. uh, were done online so that at least the population or the space, more spaces will be available hmm. for those practical courses to be done in the institution to avoid uh -huh, uh -huh. close contact. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, let, let me come to Queer. Okay. How was it in Queer? In Queer, one thing that I have to say that in Queer, it is a little bit advanced because since time in Memorial, we have had this uh, online system of learning. Mm -hmm. So it is something that had been operational even before the COVID-19 came into place. Mm -hmm. So we never, we have never ever had a situation where our progression, in as far as our academic life is concerned is mm. altered or is, is ampered or jeopardized in a way what we do is just a, a paradigm shift mm. and an, an automatic shift so immediately the on-site on, on learning is affected we resume to the online learning automatically it is without any delay yeah, it is seamless so that is one thing that we are we always have and it is very proactive and it is very operational it, mm. is, it, it has it has never had issues so i think uh, for us progression has never been altered last year our students graduated in totality 
They were uh -huh. not affected by the disease. They were not affected by the pandemic. But I think one thing that uh, they had issues with, you know, now if you are used into physical classes, then you are again put into an online mode of learning. Mm. It has it, it has to wrap some minor issues, but which we were able to beat mm -hmm. before graduation. So for us, our students were never affected at all cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they graduated in totality. Most of them graduated. No, not most. I, the, the vast majority of them graduated. And even he's talking about um, some classes uh, not being possible, the possibility of have, having some classes online uh, not being uh, uh, in inevitable. For us, I think one thing that we have always tried and tested, and it has also been vindicated that it's possible, then it is this. For us, I think even the practical classes, we have got tutorials, we have got, we have got all the required or the necessities that actually support that. So for us, everything runs as it should, mm -hmm. as a varsity. And I think that is what uh, should uh, transcend. All these uh, universities should wake up to that, and they should. Because I was surprised the other day when some, my colleague from another university, just a, 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 a very great university within our land, asking on how online learning is conducted. Mm -hmm. And you know that was very sudden. Mm -hmm. so I think all the vice chancellors, should wake up to this and they should do serious investment, not just investment, but serious investment in as far as online learning and requirement is concerned. Yeah, I'd like to interject. Eh? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we have the just like private sector and public sector. Mm -hmm. So we have private universities and public, and public universities. universities. Public mm -hmm. universities are governed by government policies. And you know how government policies at times can be so tiresome. Mm -hmm. You chase something, resources and everything, sort mm -hmm. of that. Res I think today's paper, there's, uh, uh, the UON uh, account and KU accounts have been freezed mm -hmm. for purposes of not remitting taxes. So you find that we have uh, financial challenges. Mm -hmm. Every good thing uh, uh, requires finances, and you also know that. Mm -hmm. If you need something nice, you'll have to have money. Mm -hmm. So that I will have to defend the public... Uh, Universities, because for for for, for choir is uh, a private, private. Uh, and uh, took is public. Is public, because uh, so when it comes to such kind of uh, policies where we have uh, advanced uh, online learning, uh, mm. uh, you know public institutions are to blend in because you know public institutions uh, accommodate people from different walks. Someone from Trukana who mm. has never even interacted with a smartphone. When it comes to the institution, this is the first time maybe the school might say that you have to have a laptop. Mm. So you have to learn as compared to a private institution where if you go there, you have to go based on your pocket. So we have to do some element of learning. Uh, we have to do sensitization when it comes to teaching our students on how to use some gadgets mm -hmm. uh, or softwares. And finally, also, you know, I know you might find this absurd, but you know, public institutions have some very old failures, professors who even if you some they had to be taught on how to use, uh, how to teach at uh, the online platforms for us uh -huh. to And you know, uh, they had to be taught for them to also to come and use it on us. So, um, <laughs> so, uh, so the students are to be taught, at the same time the lecturers also are to, to be the taught. Platforms, the online because platforms. Due to their um, position in life. Due to their position in life, apparently. Rama, <laughs> <laughs> think. You, you, know, you know universities are governed by the uh, policies from the Commission of University Education and uh, the CLE, the Commission of Legal Education as well. So I think uh, a certified university should not uh, again say that, you know, a, a public university, even, even as you know, he is talking about them lacking sufficient funding and funds from the government, mm -hmm. and so that actually hampers their activities big time. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that is true. Even us, as a, as a, you know, even the private universities, like for instance, Catholic, the Catholic University of Eastern Africa, mm -hmm. entered a pact with the government. And so as we speak as at now, even private universities enroll government-sponsored students. Are you uh, now, now this, this, this is a question. Um, are you saying that functionalities between public and private universities are similar? I don't mean that. I know that there are a lot of um, variants and differences between a private enterprise and, uh, and a public enterprise. Mm -hmm. So there are very 
uh, there are some uh, quite uh, differences. But so, I think so you in agree with what you in agree with what but, but in as far as the academic process and planning is concerned and the policies that govern them, hmm. then there are no differences. Even for us, even as we speak, we also have got veterans. We have also professors who are aged enough. But I think how, one thing... Did, did they know how to use the gadgets and the By the virtue platforms. of the fact that, you know, I told you that since time in memorial, we have, got, we, we have had that system. So they uh -huh. were indoctrinated in the system a from time. that time, a long time. And so that is something that they're a very... They, they really understand on how it works. Uh, yes, it created. It means they were taken through a process and taught. So, anyway, uh, I would like to emphasize on one thing. Uh, uh, I've, we are part of management, the student union. Uh, mm -hmm. We are we attend uh, senate meetings, and apparently we know how university runs. You know, for you to come up with a policy in a government institution, mm -hmm. you know, you have to sit down, come up with a budget, and send it to the ins to the ministry, and for the ministry to approve and disband funds. I know how hectic that process might be. A private uh, entity can wake up today and decide that we want to do one, two, three things. Therefore, we love to add a small penny on the student's uh, fee. So they are not entitled to public scrutiny as compared to public institutions. But anyway, that one should not justify the fact that uh, uh, they are, uh, we are still lagging behind in a way when it comes to online learning. Uh, to give a credit, is uh, we have to commend that where we are now, mm. we've tried to blend in. We've tried to blend in and actually it is working. And I uh, think 80% of public institutions, uh, just as I said, there are courses that you can't do online uh, when it comes to practicals because you have the machines there. Mm -hmm. You have to interact, let's say when it's uh, engineering, we have laboratories that have machines. You have, to be, you have to be shown this button is for this and it's for this. Mm -hmm. So you can't bank on tutorials. Mm -hmm. So for purposes of uh, being more advanced, uh, we encourage that uh, practicals ought to be done in our institutions. Uh, and do, do you have classes that um, require someone to be there physically? Or courses or y units? Sorry. Yes, for us we have. You have, you, do you have units that require someone to be there physically at 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 choir? Units that uh, you you know you know that you, we are, that, that, that are similar. Those, those are science courses. Science, exactly. Our institution also offers science courses. Hmm. We have computer science. We have got uh, health sciences like nursing. And but you, you know, are not affected. If, even the if, even the government has been considerate. You remember in the second closure. They exempted some uh, courses that they understand that, that it is quite problem studying while at home. So I think even the government from their side are very, very skeptical and they understand this scenario better. So for us also on that, even there are courses in as much as we argue that in totality, there is no possibility of studying these courses because you have to interact with the machines, you have mm -hmm. to interact with the gadgets. Mm -hmm. But let's be also very honest with us, ourselves. There is a possibility and once we tap into the leeways, there's a practicality and there is a possibility that these courses can as well be studied online. Let, let, let us not be hopeless here. Let us not be pessimistic. <laughs> and let us not only, let, let us not uh, argue that it is in totality not possible to study all the courses in the entirety online. Mm -hmm. There is a possibility and there is a, a leeway. Let us uh, just be, you, you, know, you know, one thing that we also have to understand is that uh, you, the, 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 the practical classes, like they say, they, they should be treated as a special needs. And when time calls us at now, you need to always develop strategy and mechanism of ensuring that mm. there is nothing that is always altered. So, so and that, I mean, is always, I that is one thing that we have, also, we, we have, we have also put in. So I mean, yeah, all these courses, there is no way that uh, you can say, based on what you're saying, there is no way that someone could, you can say that it is impossible in totality. It is done. It, For me, I don't it, it is actually, let me just uh, emphasize, just I think I'll take like 30 seconds. Huh? Hmm. I'll give an example. Huh? Uh, in our institution, we have a Boeing jet engine for aeronautical engineers. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's also an option of trying to go online and see the tutorials from the online. And uh, I can interact, I am interacting with that engine practically because it's in our institution. Uh -huh. So I go and 
I, I'm being shown the hydraulics part of it and everything, and I see it and interact with it. Mm. As compared to, I follow it uh, through a YouTube channel and see it. <laughs> Who is going to be more competent? You know, when it comes to learning, learning is diverse. You have to have more of confidence handling it. Uh, you, finally, you can take a driving lesson online and you can do it practically. But when you interact with the car practically, you have confidence. That's um, it. I want us to take a short break. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this thing is hard. <laughs> I, I, I really wonder how universities are going to cope, considering that, the, uh, you know, now we are reopening. Are you confident in uh, the fact that now we are going to back to uh, our universities? Are you confident in the fact that now we are well prepared? Are we well equipped? Are our universities able to, you know, uh, accept their students in, considering COVID protocols, social distancing, sanitizing? Uh, how are we going to work during this whole time in the universities? I am with student leaders. Let's take a short break. We'll be back in a bit, but th keep the conversation going. The hashtag is one in the morning. We'll be back after this break. Why 254? Imagine. Thank you very much for keeping it why in the morning. As always, we value your presence and your feedback. The hashtag is why in the morning at Ramagoko. And that Y254 channel, keep casting, keep tweeting. And just as a reminder, Y254 is turning four. Make sure that you engage with us. We would like to appreciate you for being a loyal viewer. We are giving away gift hampers, bags, t-shirts, pens, airtime, worth uh, so much just for you for being part of the Y254, Y254 family. On all you have to do to win all these gift vouchers is just tell us names of why in the morning presenters right now. Make sure that you head over to Facebook and Twitter. Y254 is where you can find us. Drop in your comments in regards to that. Who are the presenters of why in the morning? Answer one, two, three, four. Can I give you number one? Rama Google. Give you number two, three, four. As many as you can. Presenters of why in the morning. Make sure that you do that on Facebook and on Twitter. The more you comment, the higher your chances of winning these gift vouchers. Why 254 turns 4. Let's move on to the next uh, con to, 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 to the very last conversation. Remember, if you're just joining us, you're just, you're just in time for the next part of our conversation. I am with the youth leaders here, David Wiper, who is the president of Quare. I am with uh, 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 Brian who is uh, the Brian Cotieno, who is the acting secretary general at the Technical University of Kenya. It's all about reopening of schools. Are we ready? Um, but let me come to you, uh, uh, David. How comfortable um, are you um, at a time like this when it comes to student learning? And uh, particularly, let me draw your attention to the fact that um, Students are different when it comes to, um, you know, the ability to acquire some of these um, uh, materials of learning, especially when it comes to online learning, because some can afford, some cannot afford. I'm looking at uh, the government initiatives that have been put in place to ensure comfortability for students so that they can be able to, uh, to, to go online and do and, and attend their classes. Um, at a time like this, how best, uh, how far ha ha have we come in ensuring comfortability of uh, student learning? Okay, thank you so much, Ram. I think I would start by expressing my sincere gratitude to the President of this great republic for once again uh, according us an opportunity to resume physically to schools. But just like I told uh, to you earlier, mm -hmm. that uh, I still maintain my position that this university should not go back to in totality to physical learning, mm -hmm. we should ensure that we embrace online, not online, but both. a blended both. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So one thing that the, you have talked about, you have asked about the, 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 the disadvantages. You know, some of the students who understand, we don't mm -hmm. come from uh, similar backgrounds. So there are always some limitations and there are some, always some disadvantages some that a certain group of students encounter, especially in, as far as the online uh, learning is concerned, where you need some materials that uh, might not be affordable to all of us. For instance, the laptop, 
-hmm. for instance the their ability to afford data bundles each mm -hmm. and every time mm -hmm. it is always a, a difficult thing for the students and it is always tough for the students so one thing that i would like to give one thing that i would like to beseech our government to do to us and i would like uh, the ambassador the 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 the, the ps for the I institution of learning under state state department ambassador nabukwesi to ensure that just like we agreed last time because we had got a consultative meeting or a consultative forum between the students body the varsity management and the elp department and they really agreed that they are going to give their support and to offer their support in as far as the online online learning is concerned we agreed we offered a request to them and they said yes to the request so the pact and the pact that we signed with the, the elb is that they were to facilitate the online learning through the provision of laptops so there are laptops that they are going to provide the students with and i think it was a project that was supposed to commence from last year from next year mm -hmm. so i think this is one thing that we should again rethink and relook into it so that the government should ensure that it does not wait until that time of next year. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. is something that they should come out and roll out as early as at now. Mm -hmm. They should be prompt. And one thing that I, just before I conclude is that we should, the government should foster partnership program with network service providers. Like we have got the fiber, we have got Kennet, we have got Telcom, we have got Safaricom Home, so that it is always subsidized. They always offer subsidized bundles for the students. And the government must also ensure that the students are always fully equipped with the funding from ELP. It should always be pronto and uh, the students should always not <coughs> go uh, penniless mm -hmm. because it is a time that calls for financial efficiency. Mm -hmm. So I think that is from the government side that is what they should do. And from the student side, we should always offer a goodwill. The apathy that was sometimes seen there in the, the back should always be ignored. I think it is a time that we should go fully into the online learning and let us embrace it. And with the opportunity that we have to get back to classes, please let us adhere to the protocols that are put in place by the MOS. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> for me, is there anything that the government has done for the continuing students eh, to make sure that uh, their learning is smooth? No, there's nothing. No. No. Entirely. Entirely. And is there anything that the government is going to do for those who are going to join universities? Uh, in future, probably next year, yes. But they but they held consultative meetings. Uh, I'll s I'll specify. The, same. the government was to sponsor students. Uh, help was to help allocation was to be increased, mm. and uh, laptop uh, allocations was also, also to be given. But for the continuing students, uh, mm. for the continuing students, the situation is the same. Mm. Uh, mm. For the continuing students, the situation is the same. Mm. Is it true? It's the same. Because uh, the only thing we can talk about is we would like to appreciate the private sector. Mm. We would like to appreciate the private sector. Mm. The I'm, I'm, I'm told that your mic is causing an issue, oh, so just hold the top of the mic there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So I would like to appreciate the private sector, mm. uh, yeah, institutions like Safaricom and other telco companies who have decided to subsidize data bundles for students. We need to be very specific on this because uh, we are here to represent but not to lie to ourselves. Is there anything that the government ought to have done? Yes. Thing like in a, the giving students, uh, the government would have allocated a, a certain uh, funds so that our telco companies will allocate students by virtue of a registration number allocated in the institution for us to be given at Nothing has been done other than data. Uh, being given by the private sector, so we need to call a spade a spade. And laptops? Laptops are not have not been. There is no institution, or there is no. The government has not issued any laptop to any continuing student. No allocation like that. The institution is still the same as it was for the continuing students, and I'm very specific on this. And the the the, the forum that uh, student leaders had with the peers. Huh? Uh, was that uh, this was a future thing? This was something that was to be planned and was to be was to be given, but not necessarily now. For now, our students are really suffering. And if there's a plea, or if there's any way that an initiative can be uh, can come up, or the government can come up with an initiative to cushion students on the same, I think we'll really be grateful.
So, so, so you're dismissing his his uh, allegations this is, about. This is uh, my, I'm not dismissing, but this is my point of, uh, no, no, of it, view. It, it, it is outright that he's uh, dis dismissing whatever I was trying to actually <laughs> put forward. But I think we also have to be. We, we, we just have to be honest with ourselves. You know, the scenario at hand. It is something that was never anticipated. It is something that nobody envisaged. So even these initiatives that we are talking about, these programs that we are talking about, they are occasioned by what has transpired and what has been caused by the COVID-19. And what I think I, w I should tell you this, students are always offered money by L, but we always insist that they have to. We always have to insist, and that is our position as a representative. Hmm. They have to increase their location because the economy continues to be tightened. So one thing that they, they have always done is to provide money to students. But students have always not had it as a priority until now to purchase things like laptop and these things, that, the, the gadget that support online learning. So it is again a, a question of ourselves as students that what once we are provided with this money, let us have our priorities right. Let us also be honest with the government for, for, for once. Hmm. Let us have our priorities right once offered that money by the government. In the past, they have been offering just money to us through help. They have been, they have been offering us loans. But it is a point where they have again seen it that maybe we don't actually spend the money in things that are uh, support uh, the academic uh, process, like purchase of laptops and some other things. And this is one thing that you know. So that is the reason as to why they have come up with this, they've initiated this uh, lucrative program of giving, offering laptops. Now directly they are giving us the material before they were giving us cash to go purchase laptops. But as now they have thought it wise, because uh, maybe I don't know the interrogation that they have done, and now they are offering us laptop besides the money. Yeah, I think that I, is one thing I that like I, be, I, I would like to be particular in this question. Okay. What have you received exactly? Okay, from... Um, uh, let, okay. Let, 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 let him, thank uh, you, before I come to you. I am, what a, benef have I am a beneficiary of, of help. I have received a loan of uh, 45,000 in an academic year. You've received help? Help? What uh, using other materials? Using myself as a case study. What other materials have you uh, been able to receive? Help has never been uh, has never been giving any material or any stuff to you, students. You, it has been you, you mentioned money. laptops. The earlier. laptop that is an initiative that passed one to our conversation that we had with them, the okay. dialogue that we had with them. That is a project that a program that we insisted that they have to roll out and, and the they data? said yes the in for the data we have doing we have been doing a partnership as a university mm -hmm. with the kennet and they have been offering subsidies bundled to students right. for the government i think that is the reason as to why i offered a proposal to the government to now engage the network service providers mm. within themselves within their capacity because we know that they have got a higher authority okay uh, on this, before we conclude on this, uh, you know, we were talking about reopening of university during COVID-19 times. I've been receiving help. Uh, that is by virtue that I went into a university. Mm. So I wouldn't say that that is an achievement that the government has done because uh, it's something I received before even Corona came and it's still constant care. And uh, you, uh, the question was that, is there any cushion that you've received from the government? Not really. The, we, all we've done is consultative meetings. Um, so far, mm. what do you think it could be the solution? Because, yes, you've had consultative meetings. Yes. Ha, these meetings, aren't they geared towards a particular solution? Yeah, they're geared towards a particular solution, which ought to have been helping us during these times, not necessarily future cases. And um, the solution that I would uh, try to suggest was uh, immediately the the, the, this pandemic uh, t uh, came, uh, mm. the government ought to have uh, tried and uh, uh, let's say help. Help allocation would have been done immediately, mm. not necessarily having meetings and consultative meetings to quell tension, because you know how our, our leaders are, and uh, possibly will be leaders in future. And we, we have to talk about these issues, because I'm talking about a student who is in Rumba University, we interact. Trust me, uh, the only thing that I can say that institutions have done within ourselves is maybe boost our uh, internet connectivity uh -huh. and Wi-Fi connection. Other no, than uh, that, mm -hmm. I don't think uh, there's anything we have received so far. What would be your message to your students, those that you lead, uh, who are watching you from home, now that people are going back to school? Uh, we, because I want us to bring this to a, to a close now. Uh, this is my message to, to our students. Uh, uh, 
uh, the student bodies in collaboration with administrative uh, institutions within our universities uh, have tried to come up with uh, uh, modalities whereby student, all students can be accommodated in our institutions. Don't feel ashamed to come out and talk about uh, your, whatever thing you're going through. We are here to help each other. And uh, uh, as per the Technical University of Kenya, we are fully prepared. Mm. Uh, there was a Senate meeting, I think, uh, just before the President announced the measures. Uh, exams were done very well, and uh, our institution is prepared to receive students okay. wherever they are. And Karibuni uh, sana. What are you doing? Uh, what are you doing? Surely. <laughs> uh, David, your word as a president of the choir to your students, those who are watching you. M m mine is to support hmm. the administrative role and uh, the objective and obligation because uh, I think what my brother is doing, and you know that is uh, his responsibility as a student leader, hmm. to invite hmm. students back to school. But I think for me, mine is just to back. Because for me, my institution has done it. They always act very swiftly. <laughs> In, <laughs> immediately, the government communicated it was uh, done, uh, and uh, now we have got the strategy on how we are going to get back. But one okay. thing that I have to encourage them to do mm. is to understand that COVID-19 is still here with us. And we should actually, because now that it has been reopened, it is an individual's responsibility to take care of him or herself. Mm -hmm. so the students, come back to school, get back to classes, and uh, we promise you that uh, the online mode of learning and the, 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 the on-site mode of learning is going to be a blended. We are not going to run away from the online now that because the government has offered us an opportunity to get back to classes. We All are right. going to continue and we are going to perpetuate the online learning as we all, as well continue to perpetuate the side of the on-site learning. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, David and uh, Brian. Thank you. Uh, because of the interest of time, uh, that's what, that's what uh, we would like, that, that's the point where I would like to end this particular conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to have you guys again Next time, we to go see, uh, what do students feel about BBI? We are really waiting for that. In our effect, as your student <laughs> leaders, come on, you support BBI? Uh, for me, I support BBI because uh, it's uh, only a fool who doesn't accept change. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my position on BBI, BBI for me, uh, let, let us be serious. Now there is a conundrum in BBI, uh, and if it continues, even as uh, the, the assurance and the support that we had promised. We are going to withdraw it. <laughs> you're, go you're going to withdraw it? Yeah, we are as, to, as students. As you students' know, body. Students' body. Because of you, the command run, but we are, we, we are seeing from the county assemblies. <laughs> Gentlemen, we shall so, have this conversation <laughs> right? uh, on BBI and, and, and your tech. Thank, but thank you very much. I was with Brian Cotieno. Thank you. Uh, from uh, Technical University of uh, Kenya. Yeah. I was with uh, David uh, Wiper from Catholic University of Eastern Africa. Thank you very much, everyone, uh, for joining us from home. The hashtag, as always, is one in the morning. Keep participating, keep commenting. Now, remember, as I said earlier on, Y254 is standing for, and as we celebrate our anniversary, we would like to appreciate you for being our loyal viewer. Make sure that you uh, give us um, information in regards to uh, what you feel about Y254, how far we are, you know, we are celebrating you. Now, for you, for, uh, to be part for you to be part of this celebration all you have to do is you know engage with us uh, we have posted a question on our social media handles make sure that you head over to facebook and uh, comment there drop a comment or to uh, to twitter for why in the morning who are the presenters of why in the morning give us the names of the presenters that we have on uh, this particular program why in the morning uh, what are who are the presenters of why in the morning what are their names one two three four five keep commenting there Anza and Majina tell us who they are by name and the more you comment the higher chances of, of winning uh, you know branded uh, water bottles t-shirts air times you know uh, bags all in store for you. Y254 is standing for and for being our loyal viewer we have these gifts just for you. So keep texting and keep tweeting. We are taking a short break. We'll be back in a